I'm Tashi and welcome to my home. It's time for another market. Mm, market, 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 market time. I love yarn, I love yarn, I love yarn, I love yarn. I love yarn. I love yarn. Well, it is officially time for my second market of all time. I am very excited. If you are new here and you missed the first market vlog, you can check that out by clicking whatever the thing is that pops up in one of these corners. I don't know which one it is because video recording. It's a Kevin. Say hello to the people. Hello people. All right, so I have spent the last two weeks since our previous market I'm doing a little bit of market prep, but honestly, I haven't been doing that much because we still have so much inventory from that previous market. What I have prepped though, is I have prepped some bags. Um, I have made three of these retro Daisy granny square bags, and I still need to tag this one, which is why it's sitting here. I've made a couple of different versions of bags as well, and those are in my video from last week if you wanted to actually see those. So what we're gonna be doing today, today is Friday and we are allowed this evening to go and set up at the market. So it's gonna be a very similar kind of vibe, I think, as my last one, because I am just doing this market at a local church. The price was right. I decided to, to give it a try. And I honestly, the reason that I signed up for both of these markets back to back is because I, I literally couldn't decide which one I wanted to do more. And so I was like, I'll just do both of them and see how it goes. So next year I'll probably only do one or the other, um, but I'm kind of a little bit disappointed because this weekend there are so many craft fairs happening in my area. It's kind of wild. One of my recent acquaintances slash I now consider her a friend who hand dyes her own yarn. I actually will be wearing a shirt tomorrow that I made this past these past couple weeks made from her yarn. But she just texted me today and she goes, hey, are you going to be at this craft fair tomorrow? And I was like, nope because I'm gonna be at this other one and then I have another crafty friend who's gonna be at a different one so I know of at least three craft fairs that are happening tomorrow which I don't know it could be bad it could be good like people might just be in a craft fair mood and like go visit all of them or it could be bad and nobody will show up so because <laughs> I definitely don't think I'm part of the bigger one I think um my friend with the hand dyed yarn she's doing the bigger one so I did ask her what time that got over. I'm kind of hoping that I can go see that one after mine ends because mine does end a little bit early. Ours goes from 9 to 2.30 tomorrow. Um, and so I'm hoping hers will go a little bit later so I can maybe pop over there and compare to maybe see which one I want to do next year if they land on the same day again. My expectations going into this market are pretty low. Um, I expect it to go pretty much the same, if not a little bit worse than the last market, just because there are so many other things going on in town tomorrow. So my minimum goal that I am setting is actually going to be the same as last time, $150. That'll cover my booth fee and then make me feel okay about sitting there for, you know, the amount of time that the crafter is running. My mid range is going to be between three and $400. And then my, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I think I'm going to actually set a little bit lower than last time. And that's going to be like $800. So that is where we are at. Uh, we're also going to have a different person with me than my last market vlog video. So I have told you guys about this person quite a few times in quite a few of my videos. My friend that makes all of these sewn items for, for my shop, she also helps me with the linings of some of my crochet bags. Um, her name is Kelsey and she is actually going to be helping me at the market tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. Kind of an anomaly for her, honestly, because she has two small kids and so getting away from them, especially like on a weekend when they don't have school is really challenging for her. So I'm so excited to just be able to spend like five and a half kid free hours with her, um, just sitting and, and being amongst all of our creations. I think it's gonna be really fun. So I am actually very much looking forward to that. She actually is not going to join me tonight because she lives pretty far out of town. So I have recruited my amazing husband to help me tonight. We are allowed to go set up between seven and nine this evening. So my goal is to just get like the furniture and the hardware set up tonight and maybe like the signs. Hopefully tonight we'll just get all of like the display pieces set up and then I'll bring product and actually stock it tomorrow. We are going to be leaving bright and early tomorrow. My goal is to get to the venue by 
I told my friend she can meet me there sometime between 7.30 and 8, and the market starts at 9. So I will be taking you guys along with me on that whole setup journey. I'll be letting, I'll be doing check-ins with you guys tomorrow, letting you know how it's going. Um, I'm also kind of excited because one of my students is selling her crochet stuff at this fair too. So we're probably going to have to go scope her out at some point tomorrow as well um, because she does a really amazing job and I'm just kind of excited to see like how she continues to grow and transform um, and I hope she sticks with it because she is really, really good. If you want to know everything that I'm bringing to this market, it, watch the last market vlog video because it's basically all of that stuff minus like the nine transactions worth of items that we sold which was not a lot. So it's really gonna be a lot of the same stuff. Um, the only difference is we have a bunch of Halloween inventory left and I actually have it all in this <laughs> bucket. <laughs> this is all of our Halloween inventory and I have some like hanging over there. So my friend and I decided that we're gonna do all of our Halloween stuff 50% off because we kind of just want to get rid of it um, because we're going to want to make new stuff next year. So I have to figure out like some sort of bin or container, I don't know, some way to display this and some sort of signage to go with it to mark it all 50% off. But yeah, so that's another thing that I got to do tonight is I got to figure, I got to figure all that out. So I got a lot to do. I got a lot to do. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm only mildly overwhelmed and Friday night I have a tradition Friday night I get into my comfy clothes as soon as I get home from work and I clean my entire house so that's on the agenda as well so I think I'm just gonna clean until my husband gets home and then um, I'll try to get the car loaded before he gets home so that at seven o'clock we can just zip over to the venue set up and then come home for the evening that's the general plan. Um, yeah, I guess I will just, I'll probably talk to you guys sometime tomorrow. Told you to walk away. That was my first and last mistake. I'm blue without your face. Well, what can I do? Cause I'm just a sinking ship. And you're just a was not supposed to go off until six but my dog shaped alarm went off at about 4 15 via vomit on my bedroom carpet so that was cool and I have this amazing superpower where once I'm awake I can't go back to sleep so that's also cool <laughs> Oh, needless to say, it's probably going to be a really long day, but I figured while I'm awake this early, I'm going to get some more stuff prepped because I was kind of thinking about my table setup last night. So my table at this craft fair is actually longer than what I thought it was going to be. It's an eight foot table and I thought it was just going to be a six foot table, which is what my first craft fair's table size was. So... Of course, there's always snafus that you run into when you do a craft fair. Um, so my snafu at this craft fair was that I did not have an eight foot tablecloth. 
Thankfully, there was a Walmart right down the road. So my husband and I quick ran to Walmart, grabbed a tablecloth, and it's not a fitted one like I prefer, but it is what it is. Like, it's just, it's going to be what it's going to be today. It's not a big deal. Um, so we just bought, you know, I bought the one tablecloth that was there that worked and um, we're just making do with that for today. And then since it's a bigger table, I have more space to kind of spread my stuff out and, you know, I don't have all that Halloween stuff that's going to be taking up space. So I have some um, different displays and I'm, I'm honestly not sure like how I'm going to set everything up, but I also have this like tea stand that I got for these car buddies that I had at my last market, which just like hang over your rear view mirror in your car. But my thought was I could hang my like puff clutches from that tea stand because I think that would be cute, but I only have one of those puff clutches. So I'm going to try to whip up a couple more since I'm up so early um, because then I can at least put three there and that would look super cute. And then the other thing that I did last night, which I showed you guys, was I made this, um, this, you know, tumbler sweater and it turned out so cute and this whipped up so fast because I have a literal, a buttload of these granny squares already made. Yeah, this is just the Red Heart Granny Square yarn, and I figured out how to make it into the, the Starburst pattern um, after playing around with it for a while. So I have like two skeins of the Red Heart Granny Square yarn worth of these granny squares. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. And so I'm bringing, I'm bringing all of them with me to the craft fair, and I was just going to quick whip up some more of these because um, I have this like this tiered like wooden stand that I didn't use at my last craft fair, but that I have enough room for on my table at this one. And I wasn't sure what I was gonna set on that. I originally bought it to set mystery boxes on, but I didn't make any for this fair. Um, so my thought was, okay, well maybe I could figure out a way to display these on there. I'm kind of like sad I didn't come up with this earlier because I think it would be fun if I made like little cardstock inserts to like hold them um, to display them nicer because then the cardstock inserts would sit really nicely. Um, but my printer can't handle cardstock, so that's not going to be a thing that happens this morning. Um, it is what it is. This is, this is, this is the life. I also have this like very nearly finished sweater. I just need to finish, um, crocheting in the inside. So I might try to get that done this morning as well. I don't know. I have a lot of goals this morning, I guess, but we'll see how much I get done. And yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do all that. I'm just gonna sit here and crochet until I need to start getting ready to leave for the craft fair.
We are all set up and ready to go with half an hour to spare and Kelsey's here! Yay! We're so excited! So this is her first time helping me with the craft fair, obviously since this is only my second craft fair. So, are you excited? I'm not awake enough to be excited. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah, you guys know I was up at 4.30, so we're just living our best lives here, people. Okay, also outfit time because it's very important. So, the shirt. Um, is made of Rachel's hand dyed yarn, which I will link in the description. I finished it this week, got it all blocked and ready to go so that I could wear it today, and here she is. And of course, wearing my crochet, crochet shoes also because very important part of the outfit. And this is her fabulous crochet stand. So everybody say hi to Lander. Hi Lander. Hi Lander. Would you like to say hi to the people? Hi people. <laughs> How long have you been crocheting? Um, probably about like seven or eight years. And this is your first craft fair? Yeah, it is. And I bought one of her things. Look at this tiny frog keychain. Can we just, how cute is that? Lander's here with the name. So cute. The name of the frog. What's the name of the frog? Wait, what are you talking about? Aren't they like leggy frogs or something? Yeah, the, well that's the name of the general pattern. General pattern? Yeah. Good luck today. Thanks. I'm excited to hear how it goes. Yeah. Me too. We are officially one hour into the fair and we have made one sale for like a total of $15. So, Doing great. Doing great. Well, it is almost noon. We've made three sales. I don't think we're gonna make our booth money back. Yeah. It's not 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 going well. Not at all. Kelsey got us food. I got a children's meal. It's the biggest children's meal I've ever seen. I'm not mad about it because I'm really hungry. And we did just make another sale, so we're getting closer to making back our booth money, but still not quite there. So, two more hours to go. Ten minutes to tear down. We still only have five transactions. Hello, it is the next day. Um, we have some stuff to talk about. So this was only my second market ever, right? Like ever, ever. So I really don't have a ton to compare it to. I, you know, talked about kind of some of my worries going into the market. The fact that there were like multiple other markets going on in the area the same day. Turns out there were like at least three other markets going on that I specifically knew of that I had friends that were um, vending at. So that was a little um, a little interesting. Like I didn't know if that was going to hinder or help. Like if people were just gonna be like jumping from market to market. <sighs> we only had five total sales and it did not go great. So I'm just gonna, I'll run you guys through um, all of the sales. So these prices do include the tax that was charged on the items. So I sold Let's see, the first transaction, we sold one ghost plushie and two um, like mini plushies that I used to have in my mystery boxes. I ended up just taking them out. Those were both half off. So the full size ghost plushie only ended up being $6. The minis ended up being $4 each. So that was a sale of $15. Um, and then the second sale, I just sold one ghost plushie. So again, that was another $6. And then the third sale was for two small pumpkins, which the small pumpkins, it was buy two for $8. So that was an $8 transaction. <laughs> and then, 
And then we had a decent sale. Um, this really nice lady, she actually, she was like shopping in the booth. She left and then she came back because she was obsessed with my zipper wallet. Like I had this retro Daisy granny square, um, like little pouch thing. So it was just two retro Daisy granny squares, like crocheted together. And then my friend made a lining with a zipper. And so she came back and bought that for $25. And then she bought two little keychain wallets that my friend made for $8 a piece. So that sale was $41. And then, and then the last sale of the day, they bought, um, two small pumpkins, one large pumpkin, and then one car buddy. So most of those items were discounted because you know, it's seasonal. So that was a $30 sale. So in total, we only sold like around $100 worth of stuff. It was like under $100. So we'll, we'll just, we'll round it up to 100. And I had to pay Kelsey, my friend, um, her cut, which was $25. So all in all, I made $75. And the booth fee, what was the booth fee? The booth fee was, I don't even remember. I have to go look back. So the booth fee was actually cheaper than I thought. So that's nice. I think I must've been getting it confused in my head with the other one. So I actually only ended up paying $55 for this show. So that actually is better than I thought. I thought I paid 70 for this show, but I think that was the last show. So $55 still not excellent. So I ended up, <laughs> making almost $20, but not quite $20. Um, and then my friend did go and get us lunch. And so I actually paid her $10 for lunch. So really I made a whole $10. I, I made, I made $10. So not great. Five sales over the course of five and a half hours. Also not great. It was very slow. Um, you know, Kelsey and I, we were, we had a lot of time to just obviously sit around and kind of chat. And one of the things that we were kind of, you know, thinking about is we were watching the clientele that was like coming through this market. And it was a very similar clientele to my last market because they were both at churches and you know, nothing wrong with it, but it was just an older clientele. And the stuff that we sell is a lot of times geared towards, you know, more people our age and younger. So like millennials and the Gen Z kind of generations. So, you know, we were kind of thinking like for future markets, we want to focus more on markets that'll maybe attract like a younger crowd. So I am excited for my market that's coming up in December because it is going to be like a younger group of people. Um, the, I know some of the people that are vending it, they're around my age. It's, you know, it's this art collective group that's, that's in our area. And so they're, you know, my age people that support, you know, small businesses and artists in the local community. So I think that that market will be really, really good for kind of like what we're, what we're kind of vibing for. And then Kelsey also reached out to her sister-in-law because her sister-in-law does art, um, kind of in the area. So she's really involved in the art community. And she was asking her, you know, like, what are some places we should be looking? And her sister-in-law did give her one place that I'm going to look into a little bit more. It's, it's a place that like sells art by artists and then they just take a cut of the profits. So I thought that maybe it might be worthwhile for me to try to sell like some of my bigger ticket items there, like my cardigans and my, you know, my, my big like sweaters and stuff. Cause those are hundreds of dollars. And, you know, I feel like usually people coming to craft fairs, they're not trying to drop like $200 on a sweater, which like, I don't blame them. Cause I, I wouldn't even do that. Um, um, if I'm being realistic, like it's definitely worth it. You know, I put the time into it, but I have the skill to make it. So it's, and I'm just not financially in a place where I can drop $200 on a sweater, but you know, some people are. So I just need to find those people. We also thought like trying to find craft fairs at breweries and wineries would um, kind of be more our, our vibe. So I am going to be doing, I'm I'm just about to email the person. I am actually going to sign up for another craft fair that's happening in three weeks. It'll be on Small Business Saturday, and it's going to be at um, Falls Park in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is like kind of the iconic landmark of the town that I live in. And so I'm kind of hoping that that again will attract like a little bit of a younger crowd. Um, it's a cheap show, so I'm not super worried if it goes kind of like like yesterday did, then it's not the end of the world. And again, it's just, it's a learning curve, right? It's everything's a learning curve at this point. So at least I didn't, 
go in the hole <laughs> and that that was what I was worried about like as we were halfway through and I had only made those those two small sales I was like please just just let me get my booth money back that that was like my mid my mid show prayer I was like if I can just get my booth money back like I will walk away from this and be satisfied and like obviously I'm still a little disappointed but it, it can always go worse that's the thing I have to just keep reminding myself like it could always go worse yeah, it was a learning opportunity and I actually, the gal that bought my little um, flower square pouch, she and I had a great conversation and she gave me a really good idea for some stuff that I could sell at my upcoming markets for like Christmas gifts. And so it was definitely not wasted time in, in those regards because she was great and um, gave me some really great ideas as well. You know, we got more experience and overall it was it was a positive time like it was a fun time being there with my best friend and just kind of hanging out and being surrounded by other crafters who are passionate about what they do it was awesome to see my students selling her stuff so that was so so special to see that and so that was that was just really cool as well but yeah i think uh overall um not my best market but live and learn one thing that i really did like was i loved the eight foot table <laughs> chef's kiss the eight foot table really makes a difference. My gosh, those two extra feet. I was not expecting that um, to make that much of a difference, but I loved it. I had this like a three tiered wooden stand that I couldn't fit on at my last craft fair because I didn't have any room for it because everything was so smushed together. And I was able to fit that on my table this time. And so I actually ended up like quick making some stuff the night before slash day of um, to fill it. So that brings me to the final announcement of this video. I will be having a Black Friday shop drop on my website where I will be launching like all of these items for gift giving. So there'll be smaller ticket items, there'll be some bigger ticket items mixed in there, but it'll mainly be like 30 and under dollar gifts that you guys can buy to give to your loved ones. So stay tuned for that. I will definitely be, you know, revealing different items on my Instagram. So definitely make sure to follow me there if that's something that you're interested in. And as always, it was wonderful hanging out with you guys for this market. If you have any other questions on how it went or anything at all, just feel free to drop them in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time for another crafting adventure. my first and